Welcome to What's Your Story? Every week I bring you authentic guests with interesting insights and actionable information that you can put to good use. And every week we pick a different topic. Today, we're looking at the role of sales training as a driver of business success. Organizations spend billions of dollars every year on sales training. There are hundreds of sales training systems and tens of thousands of individuals out calling on corporations, organizations, nonprofits to sell their system. But the concept is often misunderstood and routinely underfunded, believe it or not. My guest today is Scott Messer, the founder of Sales Evolution. For over two decades of experience, with experience, Scott has established himself as the subject matter expert in both sales and sales management arenas. As a client set up Scott, he gets sales. He's a coach, a trainer, an advisor, a confidant, an expert, and so much more. Today, Scott will provide us with clarity, insight, and advice relative to the role of sales and sales training in 2018. Scott, welcome to What's Your Story? Thank you, Charlie. It's wonderful to be here. Now, what I'm about to do is not throwing you a curveball, but selling. Is it an art form or is it a science? How I, do you, where do you fall on that continuum? I would say 100%. Yo, <laughs> what do you mean? There is a science side of it. That is the sales process itself. Without a process, what are you doing? Just out there hacking away at it. So it is important to know the various steps and stages in a sales process. And by the way, every methodology, if you boil it down to one page, it's pretty much the same process. So that is the easiest thing to master. The most difficult part to master, of course, is the emotional side of selling. Emotional intelligence, the emotional quotient. And that is the art or the magic in selling. So yes, it is magic and it is science. Thank you. That put a lot of things in perspective. There's an adage that says nothing happens in business until the sale is made. Yes. In his book, To Sell as Human, Daniel Pink has mentioned that the relationship between the buyer and seller has changed dramatically over the years. I'd like to get your insights into that. What's different today than it was maybe 15, 20 years ago? In a word, technology. There was a time where the primary role of a business developer or salesperson was to educate the prospect, to bring information to the prospect. Now, with the internet and all the other avenues such as LinkedIn, websites, etc., by the time a salesperson gets to the buyer, they're pretty far along the journey. In fact, it is said 60% of the way through the journey to where they want to buy, what they want to buy. So the thing that they seem to be looking for, the buyers now, is not so much the product or the service as it is the person they trust, the person who understands what they are looking to do and why it's important to them to provide that service or product. In what way, what do they expect from that, we'll call it salesperson, moving forward? What, after they quote, close sure. the sale, what's the role of that person after that? After the sale is closed? Yeah. Implementation, presumably. Support, I'm not sure. It depends on the product or the service. But I would say that most buyers, at least in the world, in arenas that we work in, it's not so much transactional as it is ongoing. I mentioned earlier that the marketplace is flooded with all kinds of different selling systems, et cetera. You've labeled the sales evolution process as guess-free selling. Yes. Very clever title. Can you get specific as to what that's all about? Sure. When I started Sales Evolution about 14 years ago, 
I wanted to name the selling system stress-free selling, but I got a cease and desist from somebody who said, we've trademarked it. So I said, okay, what sounds similar? And the light bulb went on and it ties in beautifully to stress-free selling because when you remove guessing from anything, the stress goes way down. Additionally, if you're going to be open and transparent with your buyers and get them to be open and transparent with you, there should be no guessing. Guess-free selling is not about closing. In fact, it's quite to the contrary. There is no close in guess-free selling. We teach business developers how to establish a mutual process and then collect decisions at each gate or each milestone along the way. And when you get to the end, there's only one last decision to make, yes or no. And if you do it right, you never have to ask your prospect to buy from you. So how is that different? For the people out there that haven't studied all these different systems, how is this different? What's distinctively different about this? Well, it certainly reduces stress on both sides. Because when I speak to a group of buyers, CEOs, et cetera, one of the questions I always ask is, how many of you like being closed by a salesperson? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, sometimes somebody will raise their hand and it's because they have an intellectual interest to see how they're doing it, but they are not interested in press down hard, third copy is yours. <laughs> On the other side of it, when I am working with salespeople, I'll ask the question, how many of you really like closing deals? I don't mean getting the check, we all like getting the check, right? But how many like closing? Very few people raise their hand. So what I've figured out is to teach people who don't like to do something, how to do it better to people who don't like having it being done is kind of perverse. And that is what 99% of the sales methods are all about, how to close. By establishing again a mutual, and there, I emphasize the word mutual process to figure out whether or not you can do business together and, and, and lay out what that process is and go from step to step to step, it's a beautiful thing. I first took a sales training program back in the 70s. And then I worked for a company that sold the most popular sales training program in the world, Xerox. You may have heard of it. Sure. It was so manipulative, in my opinion, that I was doing it to somebody, not with somebody. It sounds yes. like you're more the, the latter. It's collaborative. Okay. It's about cooperation. It's about collaboration. And most important of all, Charlie, it's about communication. The best sales conversations are what makes it happen. It's, it's not about convincing. Charlie, you fool, you don't understand how our, why our stuff is so good. <laughs> How's that work for the, for the salespeople out there that are <laughs> trying that approach? Probably not real well. Give us an example. Is there, I'm sure you got plenty of stories. So can you share one with the audience that sort of demonstrates how this works? Sure. Many salespeople today go out on their first meeting with what we call their capabilities deck. 72 slides, all about them, that nobody really wants to see. Yet, they believe, the salespeople, that this is the way you have to convince somebody of your worth. Guess what, business developers? The reason they invited you in is because they want to buy your stuff. They think you are capable of delivering what they are looking for. Get out of the way and let them buy it. So you might open up that call by asking a question, which would be something like, Charlie, 100 people ask for every hour of your time. Today, you've elected to spend this hour with me. There must be something on your mind that you think I can help you with. How can I help you? That's brilliant. That's a brilliant question that cuts right to the chase. It tells me that I'm important in the process and you really want to know what I'm thinking, not pitch me something I don't even know I want. Charlie, there are a thousand examples of that question in sales. And by the way, at this moment, if you were my prospect, 
Do I know you have a need? Do I know what you want? Do I know what success looks like to you? No, but let me tell you about the great stuff we've got. We'll spend 45 minutes talking about me, and then when I'm done, you can focus the rest of the attention on me. Well, it's backwards. Spotlight's always on the client, on the, always on the prospect. So it's a client-focused process as opposed to a salesperson-focused process. Charlie, this will melt a lot of people's minds, but your products and services are free. Nobody is paying you for your products and services. Oh. I want to stop at that point. We need to go to a commercial. We'll be right back with my guest, Scott Messer, to further educate us about this different way of approaching the buyer. We'll be right back. Hi, my name's Casey Price, host of a brand new show called Everyday Elder Care. My show will help you take the stress out of caring for your elderly loved one by educating you about options and solutions you may not even know exist. Tune in every Tuesday at noon on RVN TV. We'll see you there. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood. Our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date. The winning business deal. A memorable family celebration. Welcome to Rod Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Independent living for seniors age 62 and over, People Inc. offers safe, maintenance free apartments across Western New York. The affordable rent is income based. For more information, call People Inc. Senior Living at 817 9090. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union. Already in a neighborhood near you. Assurance. It's a word, a touch, a look that sparks a feeling. Peace of mind. Welcome back to What's Your Story? My guest today is Scott Messer, founder of Sales Evolution. And he just said something very controversial. You said that nobody pays any money for my products, they're free. Yes. Please explain that. That was a hard one to swallow. Sure. If you think about what most salespeople, business developers are doing, they're providing products and services. But people, I'll use my work specifically, nobody's looking for sales training and coaching. They're looking to improve their margins, to make larger sales, to get the third generation solidly into the business. Who knows what it might be? But that's what they're spending the money on, a particular specific outcome that is important and personal to them. So it has nothing to do with a program. The, the products and services that anybody provides are merely the means to the end, the mechanics to the end. So the conversation should be about those aspirations. You have to understand it because, Charlie, most situations involve competition. 
The salespeople are all nice. Most of them, the, the products work. Pricing power, people can move prices around. Subject matter experts, everybody's got them. And the salespeople are well liked and personable. That's why it always goes down to price, because everything else is the same. Unless? Unless somebody understands what they are really looking to do, the buyer that is. Because when the buyer has the confidence and belief <coughs> that that person understands the real objective and goal, they believe that everything that's done by that salesperson is to accomplish that end. Okay. As opposed to, here's my stuff. When you're selling stuff against somebody else's stuff, you've got a lot of competition. When you're showing insight and understanding of the real goals and outcomes, you're the safest person to do business with. And by the way, they'll pay you more. What you just said took me back to a conversation you and I had previously where you laid out your vision statement, if you will. Could you talk a little bit about that? My vision is a better world for buyers and sellers. It's pretty big, pretty big. Saving the world one company, one person at a time. Okay. It doesn't have to be so hard. When people are trying to close, put out, put out your hand, okay? I'm gonna push, and what are you naturally gonna do? I'm push back. Of course, that's traditional selling. In our world, we get the salesperson to show up and stand next to their buyers, hold each other's hands, and walk through the door to money. Money for the salesperson, money for the buyer. Money for the salesperson, the outcome for the, the buyer. buyer. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so hard. It takes a lot of wisdom and experience to come up with that outcome for what you just said. Share with us your journey. Like, where did it start? I know where it's ended so far. Sure. Charlie, I've been in sales my whole life. I won't say how long. A long time. And I've sold technical products like industrial chemicals. I know nothing about chemicals or chemistry. I sold a tensile testing application. I ran the company. I didn't even know what tensile testing was, <laughs> literally, <laughs> until the day before I walked in. <clears throat> uh, I spent 10 years selling software, and anybody that knows me, when they hear that, I mean, it, it's a joke. Well, I'm assuming you were successful at every stop, though. Every one. Okay. Because when it comes to selling, there are three pillars. The first is process. You've got to have a sales process. They're all pretty much the same, but you need to know it cold and be able to do it on your sales calls and sales journeys. Second, people are people. I don't care what you're selling. People are people. You know, we talked about science and art. Yeah. Well, process is the science the art of people, the only thing that is different between the widget manufacturer and the consultant, between the distribution company and the glass manufacturer, is the buzzwords of their industry. And I maintain that if you give a good salesperson a couple hours of buzzword training and whatever technical support they would need to go out to sell it, they're gonna be successful. So there it is. Someone said to me, he's a mad wizard of sales. I'm getting a feel for that now. Can you, <laughs> can you explain what they were talking about? We turn traditional selling on its head. It's the same process, but a completely different application. There is no closing, as we mentioned earlier. We teach wow. people how to collect decisions. It's not about our stuff, it's about what they are trying to do. Business developers probably qualify for almost everyone they talk to. They represent good products, they work for good companies, they're honest, ethical people. They qualify for everyone, but everyone doesn't qualify for them. Everybody doesn't qualify for you that you talk to. Everybody doesn't qualify for me that I talk to. 
When you start to make your prospects qualify for you, that's one example of turning things on their head. It really comes down, Charlie, I think, to the salesperson's bill of rights. The what? The salesperson's bill of rights. You probably were unaware that there is one. Few no, people I, are. This is news to me. Okay. I'm going to make a presumption our audience knows about the United States Bill of Rights. These are the things that make living in America as great as it is. Not so much because of the rights themselves, but because the rights are enforced. There are many countries that have bills of rights. I'm sure Venezuela has one. China has one. <laughs> Russia has one. Cuba has one. They're not worth a lot because the rights aren't enforced. Pretty much anything that a salesperson hates about selling is because there is a right being violated that they are not enforcing. A perfect example might be, oh, callbacks. Number one complaint we get from everybody we work with. Let me, let me guess. They go dark on you. Yeah, right. go, go figure. Been there, done that. Not, not our audience. Nobody out there, but <laughs> just some of the people I've worked with. And the question I always ask the salesperson when they come to me with that lament is, what was your agreement on how you were going to communicate? Did you get a commitment that they would return calls? Invariably, the answer is, no, I did not. Now, the good news is, is that these buyers don't call anybody back. They're not picking on this individual. But that doesn't help. Right. The bad news, which is, went dark. Mm -hmm. By establishing what your right is and getting agreement on how you're going to communicate with your prospect, you will go from a 3%, 5% callback rate to, I don't know, 80, 85. You're still going to have to live with the handful that don't honor the commitment that they made. But for those folks in our guest-free selling world, we've got some great techniques to raise the dead. <laughs> so it truly takes the guessing out of what's next. All the time. So this is impressive. But why do you do this? I know you make money, and, but why do you do this? What drives you continually? Because you've been at it a long time, Scott. Charlie, I like helping people. I really do. And I find it a fascinating business to be in. Part of what drives me is at any given moment, I'm working on dozens of deals because coaching is really the central piece that makes our program work. Anybody can train. Training is not hard. But unlocking and unblocking heads is really hard. Getting people to implement what they're learning, get them emotionally detached so that they can do what they know they should do, but just can't. So it's just thrilling to get emails and phone calls. It worked, it worked, and it does work. So what do you do to ensure that it works? What does your group do to ensure that those people you train are gonna be able to be successful? Because that's the outcome they want. That is the outcome they want. First of all, one and done training just doesn't work. So we do not do one and done training. When we get asked, hey, can you do a one and done? I'll ask what the purpose is and probably say something like, look, if you're just looking for entertainment, get a juggler. <laughs> because if you're actually looking for progress from this, it won't stick. If it was easy to do, everybody would be good at sales and not too many people are. Finish the sentence. Scott Messer is... Scott Messer is always listening always watching, always trying to figure out better ways, particularly on this topic of, of sales. You know, I was driving down the road two days ago, it was in the morning, drove by a woman and her young, maybe eight-year-old son. The kid was so excited, Charlie. He was just being an eight-year-old boy, okay? And it made me think that as adults, we've lost that, okay? How do we get back to the joy of being that eight-year-old? How do we get back to the confidence, I can conquer the world, 
that we had when we were 21. Okay? That's what moves me. There you go. Scott, we're going to wind down. This is going by so quickly. But this is the point in the show where I want you to look into the camera and I want you to give your message to the audience. Or you may have an offer, or you may have a tip you'd like to share with them. But time's yours. Thank you, Charlie. The tip, if you will, that I'll give, the message that I want to leave you with is, it doesn't have to be so hard. If you took out a blank piece of paper and tried to write down a sales process and you can't do it, hire somebody. I didn't say us. Hire somebody. Your life is too hard. If this is what you're counting on to make your life good now and in the future, learn how to sell. So that would be the message I'd like to leave behind. The, uh, the offer, the ask, whatever, look, I make this offer all the time and nobody ever, I mean nobody, ever takes me up on it, but maybe your audience is different. Well, prove them wrong, audience, prove them wrong. Scott at salesevolution.com or even better, 610-662-3199. Give me a call, send me an email, I will spend an unlimited amount of time with you on a particular difficult sales situation that you are working on and help you move it forward or discover it was never there. That's very generous of you. Thank you. What's that phone number again? 610-662-3199. Email scott at salesevolution.com. It will be one of the most profitable things you will not do. <laughs> so, prove him wrong. Call him up, listen to what he has to say. You're gonna benefit from it. Scott, I can't thank you so much for coming on. What's your story? And I wanna thank you for tuning in. Next week, again, a very, very compelling, authentic guest who's gonna share insights and advice with you that you can put to work immediately. So. For What's Your Story, this is Charlie Timmons saying, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday. All right. These are